is Optical Bottomus coming to with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Prime Voyager class bulkhead, the Robots in Disguise version. Now unfortunately the first edition really never saw the light of day here in the United States and this is what we're left with. And just based on looking at him in the package, he really doesn't look all that good to be totally honest with you. He's got a glowing wrecking ball which you can kind of see here. Um, I don't know what... try... Oh, okay, on oh, it spins. Well, that's kind of neat, I suppose. Uh, that's not bad. Flip, flip it around here on the side. Really nice picture here of Bulkhead himself. They are Voyager class, but if, for some reason they're actually called Powerizers. Uh, mostly because of this. You know, you, you, you took the, the mech tech gimmick and you, you put a light in it. Flip around here on this side. Obviously a strength of 10. I mean, he's, he's Bulkhead. He's going to be a massive, strong guy. Coming up to the top here, and we see that Bulkhead, in spite of his massive strength and the skill with which he uses it, Bulkhead is not a born fighter. He prefers the simple things in life to the fury and confusion of battle. But he also knows that until the Decepticons are defeated once and for all, simple peace will remain out of reach. Oh, such a tragic, sad story. Come around here to the back, and you see him in his robot mode, also his vehicle mode, and then he's got the big giant uh, wrecking ball thing on the top comes with a snap-on battle ram it's kind of neat you got other characters in transformers prime and you can join us here on facebook transformers.com and of course youtube because just like optobotomus transformers is on youtube which i don't know where it is and then also available is starscream and of course you can check out the transformers collector club feel free to join today go ahead do it i dare you if you're not chicken <laughs> but uh, there you go, and then you can see his snap-on battle ram thing. That's about it. Here he is. Uh, I really am kind of on the fence a bit with this guy because I really, really like the first edition version. So I unfortunately might already be going into this a little bit biased. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, put some of those aside and give you guys an honest review. So let's get him open and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have the R.I.D. version of Transformers Prime Bulkhead opened up and out of its packaging. And as you can see, fairly decent representation of how Bulkhead actually looks in the cartoon. And obviously, he's pretty simplistic. He's just got this green thing. But he comes across with this big, giant monster truck look fairly well. Now, one thing that actually does, at least on mine, um, well, okay, no, I just fixed it, and now it actually kind of rolls. So that was a problem. That's no longer a problem. Now, generally speaking, it's, it's a... Oops, I dropped it. it. It's a decent looking figure, but uh, again, some of the biggest problems, and I know people are like, why are you going to comp compare it to the first edition? But really, when you when you bring the two together, you can see that there's a big difference. I mean, obviously, the size is one thing that's already off. You can kind of sort of see that he is definitely a smaller figure than the first edition. And it really is kind of missing some of the extra details. Uh, for example, when you look here on the side, he's actually got clear, well, not really clear. They're kind of cloudy. But he's actually got windows here, whereas this is just painted solid plastic. Uh, it's molded in the shape of a window, but that really does just do nothing for me. Flip around here on the back, and you can see on the, uh, I don't even know what you would call this, because it's not really a truck. Uh, th it's it's kind of like, I, I don't even know what you would call it, but you can see that it's painted here. You got some nice silver paint. Obviously, you have the taillights, which, at least on the first edition, go on the outside as well, whereas this one really doesn't. And then obviously on the top here, you got a little translucent bit. Now, this, it doesn't bug me too terribly much. It kind of blends in okay, but this is for the whole Powerizer gimmick, and this is this is weird. Uh, I mean, you you can drive around with Bulkhead's head sticking out. I mean, that I, I don't I, and it doesn't stay down. It doesn't like clip all the way down. I just find that really kind of weird that you can have that. Look at me, doodle doodle doodle. I mean, I just <laughs> that's kind of strange. And uh, for his powerizer gimmick, here's uh, here's his actual weapon. Now, in my review of Starscream, I mentioned that there's really only one powerizer weapon that I actually like, and this is it. Uh, it's kind of weird because it's it's kind of like designed to look like it's going to be the back of Bulkhead because you can kind of see his taillights right here. But I, I, I really don't know where it would be. It's just like a transformed version of part of him or something. And then you take this section here and uh, you just rotate this down and you can see the light. And then it actually spins, which I actually do kind of like that. That's really kind of neat. Now for his, uh, the first edition ball, I mean, obviously it's painted. I, I really do think that the ball on here, his uh, wrecking ball is better looking. Uh, I, I like the clear nature of it. And I mean, like I said, th this gimmick actually is kind of cool. If you go around slow enough, you can actually get the gears to lock and then you can actually keep it. Well, see, it's very delicate, but you can actually keep the ball extended out if you really wanted to. And then to display it on vehicle, this is 
really strange um because i've never seen a truck drive around like that that just kind of looks goofy it really almost kind of reminds me of one of those vans that go around chasing tornadoes and storms so i mean it's kind of strange but there you go and then look i mean if you if you catch the gear just right you can get it to actually stay all the way down which that's kind of neat and then he also comes with this thing which plugs onto the side oops and i'm dropping it all over the place it plugs onto the side which sure okay uh, now, if you take this off, you can actually plug this on the top, and that almost looks a little bit better in terms of a weapon than this gigantic thing just dangling there. But one other kind of neat little thing is you can actually take it and you can plug it. There's a hole at the edge here, edge here which I don't know why, but you can take it and you can go wee. Oh wait, get my arm out of the way. Wee! Is a helicopter? Wee! I, I guess, but uh, I don't know why you would want to do that. But at least. It, it's an option and generally speaking like I said it's not a bad looking vehicle mode it's fairly accurate to the actual cartoon my biggest complaint really is the robot mode for it I, I really don't like the way he looks so to transform them all you do come around here to the bottom separate these legs pull these out from the side just like so and then extend this bit all the way down kind of get that out of the way so now you have his legs just like so rotate these around like that do that on both sides and then fold these little gray bits. These are going to be his feet. Fold those out and it's kind of neat. There's actually a little tab section right here. You need to rotate this whole section down and then this is going to kind of clip in the side right there. So go ahead, fold this out, then rotate this down. And believe it or not, these are his legs. And I actually really like these legs more than the first edition. Uh, the ugly thing is for some reason, He's got green tires. I, I don't know why they couldn't paint those, to be totally honest with you. That's just kind of lazy. I mean, I could probably paint it myself, but I think that that just looks a whole lot better. Uh, I definitely like the way that these legs look. Coming up to the top just a little bit more. Kind of separate this, lift this up. Now, these on mine are very fragile. They pop off well, very easily, especially when I'm doing transformation. So uh, if that happens, I do apologize. There's nothing I can do about it. But then take this section, fold this up. This just accordions down just like that. Kind of get that down like so. Take this. This is tabbed into the side. Fold this out just like so. Just get it out of the way. And then these little bits right here, you kind of got to grab these bits and pull these out just like that. Take his arms, fold these down. They're tabbed together, so separate these and then rotate these out just like that. Take this section, fold this down. And then this section right here, this little tab bit, is going to plug into his butt. So just plug that into his butt right there. Butt plug. Yay! And then fold these out, just like so. Take these, fold these as far back as you can. Take this little section here, fold this down, and I unpugged, unpegged his butt plug. That's definitely not what I wanted to do. I did not want to unpeg his butt plug. Fold out his head, and then rotate this down, just like so. And then lock that into place. Here we go. <laughs> fold these back, and you're already starting to see some weirdness with this. Lift this up, rotate this uh, around, and then this just kind of dangles over here. Rotate his arms, rotate that around like so. Lift that bit, rotate it. I just pulled it out of the ball joint and, we're, and that fell off. Yeah, see you guys, I'm telling you, I really don't like this guy. Rotate that around, fold that down. And, and, and this this is a quality control thing, so it's not indicative of everybody's figure, but it just really kind of sucks. Fold that. Rotate this arm around, and there that piece goes. Again, like I said, you bump it, you put any pressure on it, and it pops right off. At least it pops right off. I mean, I guess that's a plus, but for me, it, it's kind of annoying that they even, you know, do that. And then just kind of position these to your liking and straighten that out get him oop, bend him just a little bit so he's balanced he's a fidgety little sucker 
but here you have Bulkhead in his robot mode. And when it comes down to it, the robot mode, while not terrible, I'll be totally honest, he's not a horrible representation of Bulkhead. But in my opinion, the first edition really does blow this one away. Now focusing on this figure first, uh, one of my biggest problems is that, much like the first edition, his arms are on this swivel right here, that they just rotate out. They don't lock into anything, and it really kind of... Uh, it, I don't know, I don't particularly like it. And then the shoulder pads, just kind of, they're completely separate from the actual shoulder. So you move it around and then you gotta put it down. You move it forward. I mean, it, it's constantly getting in the way. It's not terrible looking, don't get me wrong. It's really not that bad. But it really does kind of suck with some of the execution. Now, obviously, he's got these big giant wing things here, which if they could have figured out a way to make these fold down, probably would have looked a heck of a lot better, but it really didn't. Now, one thing that is actually really cool about this figure is that he's actually got a moving mouth. Uh, the head here, you can kind of see the head. God, it's hard to grab hold of it, but you can see it actually moves and he can open his mouth which is kind of neat. I actually really do kind of like that. But again, the, the way that this is designed, I mean, you got this big giant plastic piece that just hangs over here. It's really kind of ugly. I, I really dislike that. But the head sculpt on here really isn't all that bad. Some of the other problems that I really have with this guy, uh, it, it, it's, it's right here. Now, when you take a look at him, and you take a look at the first edition version, the chest and the abdomen area is so much better on this guy. Now again, this isn't terrible, but it just really doesn't have that accurate look and feel that the first edition for figure is able to pull out. I mean, really, I mean, honestly, honestly, it's not terrible. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like this figure is absolutely atrocious. A lot of people were not able to get this. And if you're interested in picking these figures up, this will be a nice alternative to have in your collection. It's just not as accurate as it really could be. And that's one thing that really does put me off. I mean, he just doesn't, I mean, with this guy, you got all these panels that jet out that really look very cool. This is just kind of flat and very dull looking, if you ask me. And then you got the whole lights down here, which they really should be in the upper section. It's just, it's just overall not accurate. Now, the arms are basically the same sort of thing. You got both of those things going on. But like I said, I really do like the legs on the R.I.D. version. I, I definitely think that they're a, a little bit better than the first edition freight figure. The, although, I mean, you got the black wheels here and then these are green, which bleh. I just, I, I mean, when it comes down to the, the design aesthetic, I like this better. Now for his, uh, his weapon, uh, you have this. Now, again, this is really kind of weird. It's, it's like the entire section here is designed to replicate uh, how it would look if it transformed from his body, which, okay, that works, but then when you move it, you have this come out, and I mean, let me see if I can get it to lock. I mean, now, yeah, well, it, it locks, but then it moves, and like I said, this just blah. Okay, let me see. Come on, stay, stay. Stay, no. Ah, it's not gonna stay. But th there's, a, there's this wrecking ball, which, again, not very accurate because it should be coming out of his hand. I mean, that's how all of these weapons are with these new R.I.D. figures. And then one thing that I, I honestly really liked about the first edition was you could fold his hand and you can replicate the gun. You can't do that with that because this guy's hand just is kind of dangling out there. And that's really kind of it. So it's, it's really a decent figure. The biggest problem with him is... He's got a much better version of himself that's out there. And for people that actually got that first edition figure, this is really kind of a let letdown. Now, he also has this thing which you can plug on to either side. And uh, this actually looks pretty good. I, I like that. It's a little bit smaller, so it's not as intrusive looking. But now, one kind of stupid gimmick is you can take this, <laughs> and I really don't even know why they bother doing this. You can plug it in here, okay? And you can fold this up. Really, this this is actually one of the gimmicks for it. And then fold it, and you can have his mace coming out of his head. Um, I, why you would even want to do that, I have no idea. But that's really kind of derpy looking, if you ask me. Now to transform him back, he's, I mean, the one thing I will say about these uh, R.I.D. figures is they're infinitely easier to transform than the first edition guys. So... Just take this whole section, kind of fold that out. Everything is just kind of like unfolding, really. Take this, rotate this, 
down and around, take his head, rotate this around, plug that right inside there, can make sure it's kind of straight back there. Then uh, this section here, you kind of tuck up underneath like so, and make sure it kind of lines up with the side of the actual car itself. Do that on this side. There that piece goes. So line that up. And like I said, this is just a quality control issue. So I'm not necessarily taking points off. It annoys me on my figure, but it's not, hopefully not a problem with everybody's figure. And this part is just a little bit kind of a pain in the butt because you got to line that up perfectly. Uh, oh, shoot. And really, you should move these arms back first just because there's not enough clearance if you don't do it otherwise. So there you go. Rotate those around. Bring this down. Up the bottom, this doesn't transform his figures right. <laughs> Rotate that around. Kind of just angle these down just to get them out of the way. Then this bit right here, tuck this in, tuck that in. Rotate this bit around. And then rotate this around again. Rotate around. And then rotate around again. Bring these together. These are going to tab together. Squeeze them nice and tight. So that's basically what you're left with fold this bit back This is going to kind of angle up there do that on this side as well Just kind of tab that into place fold this bit up You can then take these fists These are going to angle back and tuck up underneath here Kind of push them as far up as you can go. So it's like so Take the feet, you gotta separate these tabs, fold that back, then rotate these around like so. Rotate here, do that on this side as well. Untab that, fold that, rotate this entire section around, and then rotate that around just like that. There we go, guys, it's looking like it's almost done. Oh, there's a bug, there's a bug right there. You see the bug? Oh, it's gone. Oh, wait, no, there's a bug. Insecticon! Insecticon! Get out! Get away! <laughs> then take this section, fold this back, and then angle this up. Do that on this side as well. Kind of collapse everything together, and then bring these bits down. And this part is actually a bit of a pain, because you have to line all these tabs up, push them all so that they all pop into place. I, I don't even know what you would technically consider this, a, a puzzle former, I guess, but... It's definitely a pain in the buttock. There we come on, get this up, tab that in on the side. There we go, give that a nice push, lock that in. Get this piece, lock that in, squeeze everything. And here you have Bulkhead back in his vehicle mode. Like I said earlier, when it comes down to it, this figure really isn't all that bad. I personally don't like it because I think he falls short when compared to the first edition figure, which I unfortunately have. And in unfortunately having it, I compare that to this. It, it's just a natural thing for a person to do. Now that being said, I am trying to be very unbiased when it comes to reviewing this guy. The vehicle mode is not bad at all. It's a little bit smaller than I would like, but generally speaking, he, he looks pretty good and he scales fairly decently. The transformation is not overly complicated, and it's actually kind of fun to do. My biggest complaint would be how he looks in robot mode. Now, even if I didn't have the first edition figure, I would have some problems with the overall accuracy between this toy and the character that we have on TV. That being said, because I do have the first edition, and I have seen how Hasbro is able to more closely replicate that actual cartoon look, that's where I draw some kind of disappointments, because I know they can do it. Now, that's really the biggest downfall with this guy. Now, if you weren't able to get the first edition figure, this is going to be what you're going to have to settle for. And in doing so, it really isn't that terrible of a figure to have. I mean, to be totally honest with you, it really has grown on me. And it, it, it just really isn't all that bad. If you're looking to get all the characters from Transformers Prime, Bulkhead is definitely one of the essential figures to have in your collection. So based on that, I would definitely recommend picking up this guy. Just know that there is a much better version of him out there. And if you get this and then at some point in time, you're actually able to afford the first edition figure. Once you get the two in hand, you're going to be like, when it comes to this. So 
based on that, that's all I can really think of to say. So, uh, so until next time, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomus. I'll talk to you later.